Welcome to the Feather Ride. All right, so it's time to de-wolf again. Um, <laughs> I recently, <laughs> I recently posted something on Facebook about Uncle Kenny. Um, just, just a random word of faith study that I did. Uh, found a uh, an interview that he had with uh, Paul Crouch from Pre uh, TBN. It was a, a TBN show. And I believe it was, it was called Let Us Reason. So this is back in 1988. And uh, so, yeah, he, he was talking with Paul, Paul Crouch about how they're little G gods, I, you know, critic. Um, you know, I am I am he I am who he is and all that. All this just craziness. And, you know, it was just mind boggling to me that there were still there are still people out there who defend Kenneth Copeland I mean people were saying that he's anointed and uh, not to talk down on someone who's anointed and we already you know check out my one on Benny Hinn about debunking that um, and dewaffing <laughs> dewaffing that uh, touch not that anointed but man it's just you know I, I just thank God so much I, I, God is so good y'all I mean he's so good because I want I'm, I'm a I'm a uh, doctor in psychology all right so I deal with clients I deal with patients every day I provide therapy every single day to patients and um there have been patients who have actually started telling me how um, the church um, has how, how just the doctrine that they were indoctrinated with so to speak um, has jacked them up mentally and I've talked to other people even away from work too I've had plenty of messages with people like that and man it's like the more I am in my field the more I just really have a mission to de scriptures and and just really focus on why I got my two degrees um, which is forensic psychology PhD and a master's in theological studies to really integrate the psychological impact and even ramifications on theology because that is really a uh, an area that is really untouched um, for the most part um, there are so many psychological ramifications of bad theology y'all I mean I'm telling you that's the reason why I'm, I'm fascinated with studying cults and Christian cults because I'm I'm into theology and apologetics so much that I want to really rightly divide the word of truth. I really want to present a sound doctrinal presentation to scripture. Otherwise, I can't, I love Jesus so much and I love people so much that I can't see, it just behooves me for people to be okay with just allowing people to just accept bad doctrine people are hurt from that stuff i was wounded for a long time uh when i got out of the word of faith movement um and it just really i mean just i have such a passion to defend the gospel uh, like apologia is 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 so important to me it is it is one of my essentials to to defend the gospel because you have so much bad doctrine and it just it indoctrinates people that becomes their paradigm your paradigm shapes your worldview it shapes your way of thinking um, psychologically it really uh, is a blueprint of how you 
think, how you act, how you react, those things fall into place. And man, it's so just alarming. <laughs> it's so alarming how people can just, just accept bad doctrine and defend it and defend bad doctrine. And to be fair, I mean, for, for a while during my word of faith journey, um, I was that guy. I was, I was the guy just being indoctrinated with bad doctrine uh, and defending it, defending that mess. And so I understand how it is to be on the other side of like, oh, no, no, you're not saying that. No, you're, you know, you're not, you know, you're touching God's anointed and all of that. And, uh, you know, praise God, I'm, I'm on the other side of that. And I really have a heart to, to, to really expose that mess, man. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's even, it's, it's, I would even say that it's even more dangerous to an extent because it's very subtle and it's very deceptive because it's within Christendom. Like the word of faith doctrine is within Christendom. So it's easy to just overlook it. Like when you have other faiths like Hebrew Israelism, Mormonism, Christian science, and other people who use this scripture as a um, as a basis or as a foundation of their worldview. Jehovah's Witness is another one. It's easy to look at those because they have like red flags. Like you know, uh, there's we we don't we don't procreate to become God, and you know, Satan and Jesus aren't brothers and. Uh, you know, we don't misconstrue John 1 as in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and words with a God. And, uh, you know, we don't we don't believe that uh, you're saved by your bloodline when it comes to culturally, you know, we're saved by the blood, <laughs> you know, as Colossians 1 would say. So, you know, within those camps, it's easy to refute other camps that use the scripture, but just. I mean, totally butchers it for their systematic. But when it comes to word of faith and prosperity gospel doctrine, um, it's within the Christendom. And so it's easy to overlook it. And it's easy to even get to allow it to spread. And that's how it becomes very cancerous. And so, man, people defending that crap, I'm like, whoa, man, that's, that's something else. <laughs> But um, I'm going to do off another scripture. Uh, I was looking at um, a lesson plan from uh, Kenneth Copeland uh, Ministries. And it was talking about faith. And uh, it used Hebrews 11.1 1, um, as a way to activate speaking faith. Um, uh, Kenneth Copeland said this plenty of times. Um, word of faith, there is particular, particularly Kenneth Copeland in this in this context. They use faith as a force, um, and and they you know faith is a force. God created you know the uh, God made creation by faith. That's another line that they'll be used. They'll use Genesis one as God created it by faith. Faith is like a force or a superpower like a big magic wand, so to speak. And so they'll use Hebrews 11.1 1 as a proof text to faith being that force. Um, and they'll say, um, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence things not seen, Hebrews 11.1. 1. And they'll use substance as a material thing. Um, and... That's just not true. <laughs> that's that's biblically incorrect. And then they'll use uh, Hebrews 11:6. Uh, Without faith is impossible. Please God, uh, and so forth. They'll use that as a um, another proof text of saying, um, you know, the, the the other part of you know, you must believe that He is, and He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. So they'll use that as a as a kind of a proof text to activate your faith. 
diligently seek him, he'll reward you. And because you have faith, because faith is a substance, you can just pew, 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 pew. It's my faith, uh, my faith saver. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Faith savers. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's just bad doctrine. I mean, it's bad doctrine, y'all. It's bad doctrine. So to break down Hebrews 11, 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. First of all, faith, pistis, is to trust and have confidence in God. I've said that many times. Faith is not a magic wand activating force blowing the wind of God. Um, that's not faith, y'all. That's not faith. Faith is simply trusting and having confidence and believing God. Um, as we saw with Abraham, uh, he believed God and was accounted to him as righteousness. As uh, Romans 4 would say, all that derives from Genesis 15, 6. And even that word believe there is a derivative of pistis. Um, so, yeah, and, and, and substance, uh, it, it comes from the word uh, hypostasis or hypostasis, uh, which means uh, foundation, which means support, which means assurance. So hypostasis just means to understand. And so that means that there is a foundation and there is a assurance we understand there, there's a there's a grounding there's a foundation our faith is the foundation of things hoped for our trust and confidence is that foundation is that assurance is that support that hypostasis uh, so it's not faith is a want a big magic superpower we speak it and it happens no no no, no. the credit goes to God. Faith, trust in God, is the hypostasis of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That's what a Hebrews 11 one is. It does not, it is not a way of saying, okay, because Faith is a material, they use that word substance as a material thing, um, which is not biblical. It's, it's theologically just bizarre, one, and just it's just erroneous, theologically. The substance in Hebrews 11.1 1 is not material. It is hypostasis. It is a grounding. It is an assurance. That's what the substance is in Hebrews 11.1. 1. Simple as that, y'all. I mean, like, I really don't understand how you can have... I mean, I guess I can't understand it because, one, I was in it for nearly 10 years. And, two, I mean, it's it's a really... It's, it's a money grab. It's it's not only a money grab, but it's, it's also... Um, it is a way to um, really present uh, Christ in a glamorous way, um, and you know, I've had this I had this conversation with um, a buddy of mine, a fellow uh, doctor and theologian. Um, I was I was saying, you know what, and I, and I've had these conversations uh, elsewhere too. One thing I've one thing I've noticed um, in my apologetic journey, when it comes to soteriology, when it comes to theology, um, when it comes to just doctrine in general, um, one of the biggest things I've noticed is that um, a lot of people really present a framework of their beliefs, of their worldview around finding a more palatable answer for theodicy. And what I mean by theodicy, that's just a theological term for the problem of evil. Alright? So, why does, why, does, why does evil exist? Why does evil happen? So a lot of frameworks, a, a lot of views, a lot of doctrinal, you know, worldviews really shape around 
the Odyssey. And, and I'm saying that because one thing I do see in Word of Faith Doctrine is that the way that Word of Faith Doctrine handles the Odyssey is if you're experiencing evil, that just means that you don't have enough faith. And so that's the activation. That's the activation part. That's the superpower force, you know, pew, 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 laser beam type of thing um, that word of faithers apply faith to. And as I've said plenty of times on this channel, that is just simply a Christianized new thought principle. It's, 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 just, it's a ripoff of new thought. A complete ripoff of New Thought Movement. And you're you're having someone like a Kenneth Copeland or any other person in the Word of Faith Doctrine, uh, Creflo Dollar's a big faith person too. Uh, Kenneth Hagen was before he passed. Big big faithers, you know, Joyce Meyer is a big faither. Um you have those people who teach these things as far as faith being an activated being a force and um, it's just it's just it's, it's, it's I, I grieve at that stuff because you really have hundreds of thousands of people doctrinally in their head creating created a worldview saying that if bad things happen in my happen in my life that just means that I don't have enough faith where Jesus clearly says in John 16:33 you will have trials or you will have troubles but he ends that by saying, I've overcome the world. So, yes, he's overcome the world, but he clearly tells us that we'll have troubles, we'll have trials in this world. And so, that alone is a smoke and gun scripture against Word of Faith doctrine, and there's plenty of smoke and gun scriptures. But I just find it so odd and so weird that you can really formulate a complete worldview based on cherry picking scriptures and and to be fair word of faith isn't the only the only thing that does the only uh, worldview that does this um, there's plenty of other worldviews that does this that just cherry pick scriptures and just use that as a framework of why they should support their, their worldview. And not only support their worldview, you have leaders proselytizing this stuff um, to other people. And just imagine proselytizing this stuff to a non-believer, like, yeah, if you if you come to Jesus and you have faith, the only thing you the only thing you have to do is just activate your faith and you come to Jesus and you'll receive Everything that God has is yours. I am who he is, as Paul Crouch and Kenneth Copeland would say. And so things don't happen. And you pray and read your Bible and fast and do all the essentials. And you're still experiencing a season. That would psychologically cause someone to say, eh, well... I tried this faith thing. I tried this Christian thing, but eh, didn't work out for me because I guess I'm not doing it right. So I'm just not going to do it at all. So just think how dangerous that is. Just, uh, just theologically, just, just think how dangerous that is. And so that's why I'm so, I mean, I love Jesus so much and I love people so much. Love I love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, and I love my neighbor as myself. It would be, it would be, uh, it, it would be dishonest of me, and it would just be straight up insensitive for me 
to tell somebody in love when they're going off, if they're walking toward a cliff, if they're just having fun, kind of pretending they're at some type of sightseeing or something like that, or if they're just like aimlessly walking somewhere, just like, you know, uh, life without Christ, I would defend. And you're walking off a cliff and I'm just like, eh, well, they'll get it. Like it would just, it would be so insensitive to me. And I think the, what we should understand with the word of faith doctrine and particularly in this particular, and, and, and particularly in this, uh, in this context with, the, with, with this passage in Hebrews 11, one, um, we cannot use faith as a, a superpower. We can't use faith as a force. That's just, that's not biblical, y'all. It's just not biblical. Faith is trust and confidence in Christ. That's what faith is. That's why Abraham had faith. He was rewarded for his faith. Um, because he trusted in, and had confidence in God. The word of faith doctrine says, because you have faith, you can speak things. Um, and I was even looking at that lesson and they even just, they misconstrued. It was so bad that one of the bullet points said, Abraham had faith and he was able to speak things that uh, were, were not as though they were. That's not what Romans 4 says. That's not what Romans 4 says. Oh, so terrible. So terrible. So terrible. Uh, it was a new, it was a uh, uh, verse they used in Genesis about the creation story. And they put by faith in brackets and they cited it as the new King James version. And it did not say by faith in brackets in the new King James version. I mean, you're that, that alone is totally eisegeting scripture. And they use the Amplified quite a bit to add on to, you know, their uh, idea, which they misconstrued the Amplified version, but they use the, the, the additional words to fit their systematic. But they use the King James version to, and they put by faith in brackets, <laughs> and it wasn't even there. That's so terrible. So terrible. So Hebrews 11, one substance is not material. Substance is hypostasis. Hypostasis. It is grounding. It is support. It is assurance. I am assured in Christ because of my faith. I am assured in the things I hope for because of my faith in Christ. But even with that, that still doesn't activate everything that I say because I have to make sure according to 1 John 5 that it's according to his will. So that's my prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. So we gotta be very mindful of that y'all. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. I am Dr. Chris Featherstone. This is another feather ride and always remember regardless of bad doctrine regardless of butchering scriptures God is still on the throne come on somebody hey